Welcome back to our alphabet series. This is our cross stitch cat and the fiddle part two. So hit that subscribe button and cross stitch with me. All right, we're down at the craft table and ready to start part two of our cross stitch series, the cat and the fiddle. If you didn't see part one, check it out. I'll link it here. All of the colors and the floss that I'm using will be in the description below. So just click that little downward facing arrow right there. Last time we left off, we had just finished the kitty's head and ears, super adorable, and then I did the scarf. And that was the last thing that we did in part one. And as you know, I like to shade in the work as I go. So the areas that are shaded in, I've already completed. And this is what we have left to do. I am gonna change this pattern up a little bit and not do it just exactly like you see it. And here we go. I'm gonna work on the kitty's tail now. All right, I'm gonna do a voiceover for you as we speed this up just a little bit. So this whole cross stitch project, start to finish this little bib, I would say you could do anywhere between five and 10 hours. I know that's a huge time span, but depending how fast you stitch and how many distractions you may have, it could actually take that long, which is how long it took me, about somewhere between probably eight and 10 hours. So now I'm showing you there, I've got a knot on the back, so I'm gonna show you how to fix that because it's gonna happen. So, yep, showing you there a knot. And that's not good, you don't wanna leave it there. That'll affect your, your stitching. So you want both of your strands of floss. So as you can see there, there's definitely, definitely a knot there. And you don't have to cut it. Just gently pull, and there it popped right out. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, when that happens, it's usually because your thread has gotten a little bit twisted so from time to time, just let the needle dangle, you know, from the thread, from the fabric with the thread attached, and that'll take care of that. And you can actually tell when that starts happening, it starts to kind of be twisted as you pull the needle to the top of the fabric. And there's my system, as you know, for keeping track of where I am. I like to shade it in with a pencil, and I did actually erase this in this project occasionally. Um, yeah, it worked just fine. I could still see the pattern underneath, so that does work for me. So that number that we've been using there on the tail is DMC 648. All the numbers, again, are in that description box below. Really is a super cute little pattern. If I was going to use this bib actually, you know, for a baby, I would put some kind of a fabric on the back because it's obviously just all exposed threads. And now we're on DMC 3041 that I'm using for the bow across the fiddle. Not the bow on the cat. <laughs> I went through so much gray floss on this. That's a good idea too, you know, when you're gonna do any kind of a cross stitch project, just take a look at the pattern. While you can change up the colors a little bit, if you like the colors that they showed you, then definitely, you know, use that. But otherwise you can, you know, absolutely switch that up a little and, and use what you have. So what I was just showing you there was, I use those plastic bobbins for my thread, but do not pull it too tight when you wind your floss around those because it can really damage your thread over time. And even though I haven't cross stitched in quite a while, and yes, when I took the floss off of the bobbin, you could you know, see the little fold marks where it had been wrapped around that bobbin. It really wasn't a problem. It stitched just fine and, and came out really well. But there's many different ways to store your floss. That really helps me to keep track. <laughs> so now I just did his little paw. I called it a foot, but you know, I know it's a paw because it's a cat. <laughs> and so now we're working on the kitty's other paw. It's holding the little fiddle. And now that's done and you can also see the end of the little fiddle there sticking out and even the strings. So that's something that I like to do because I don't use a hoop. I roll my fabric, especially if I have a large project. I definitely want to roll it. 
So yeah, I'm showing you there. You know, I have eczema and I try to raise eczema awareness on my channel. So I'm applying lotion fairly frequently throughout my day. But if you're cross-stitching, make sure that lotion has fully sunk into your hands, obviously before you do anything with your fabric because you don't want to transfer that onto your fabric. As well as the, um, you know, the pencil from my shading there, I'm pretty careful to keep the bib or whatever fabric I'm using to cross-stitch on off of that because I don't want any of the, you know, pencil to transfer onto the fabric. So this is so cute. So that's our kitty. And now the finishing touch is coming, which I really love. And all those little, they look like little stars, but all the little X's around in that pattern, I think those were kind of the most challenging because there's nothing to anchor each one to. I sewed each one and knotted and cut each one individually. Otherwise I would have had to stretch my thread over too far of a surface. It's really only good if you're going to go to another stitch to only span about, oh, you know, about a half of an inch. So now we're back stitching. I mean, this is just the coolest part of cross stitching, right? I mean, if you cross stitch, do you love this? It just makes the whole piece kind of like come to life and just starts to pop off the fabric. I was so worried I was going to forget to sew his little nose and mouth, so I did that right away. <laughs> so there's the original you can see. So see the orange color I'm showing you, DMC351 and those orange flowers? I chose not to do that. I chose to leave the flowers off. I didn't think they added anything to it, and frankly, I really didn't like that orange color. It really just isn't my thing. But, all, but that color is listed in that description box below, which is what I was pointing to there on the, uh, on the right side. So this is how you do back stitches if you're not aware. If you are, just bear with me, but you're going to go forward a little bit. As you can see, as I'm really zoomed in there, sorry, the camera will focus in just a second. So see where I am and you see the white fabric? Now I'm going to come back, hence back stitching, and then pull that down and then you're going to make your progress that way. So you go a little ahead and back, a little ahead and back, and that's how you get that back stitching. It's just really wonderful. Look at that. Isn't it cool? I kind of wondered if, you know, I shouldn't have maybe, it didn't say it in the pattern, but done a little more back stitching around the ears. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to start over here and then just slowly show you everything. You know, details like this, like these little squares, again, like I've mentioned before, you can leave that kind of thing off depending on your design choices or what you want. Isn't he so cute? There's this little bow, and of course the violin, or excuse me, the fiddle. I keep calling it a violin. And that's the end of the little fiddle right there. Really adorable. I like the color blue for the bow. That turned out cute. That was 798, DMC 798. You know, different manufacturers have different numbers for all the colors. Really fun. And if you had some fun or learned something, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it so much, and I'll catch you later.